Hi folks, my name is Fred. Welcome back to my shop. Got something a little different for you today. Still lathe related, but uh, I think it'll be a good video for you. About a week and a half ago, I got a call from a potential customer who had aluminum rods that were four inches long, two inches in diameter, and he had a hundred of them. He wanted a 5 16 inch hole bored through each one of them. This is just a piece of scrap stock I, I have. The job's completed, customer's happy. Uh, but I thought I'd share the tool I made with you. 400 inches of stock running a 5 16 inch hole through by, by hand does not sound like my idea of fun. So I said, we, I have to be able to automate it. So I came down to the shop and said, you know, how, I, how am I going to do this? So I walked over and I've got my uh, boring bar from a 250 series quick change tool post. And I pulled out the boring bar out of the holder. And I went over and I picked up the chuck from my mill. It has a three quarter inch sleeve on it. That's a three quarter inch bore put it in there. I could tighten this up and voila, I have a tool. But I could do better than that. I think the rotational force, my theory is that the rotational force of this holder being on the far side of the, the center point of rotation for that, that tool post, it would eventually start to creep like this. So, what to do? So, decided to uh, put it end on and I bored this three-quarter inch hole put this in a four jaw chuck chucked it up found the center center drilled it with a series of drills drilled it out to approximately three quarters and then used a, a small boring bar to to finish it to three quarters of an inch now this is case hardened so the outside was pretty tough um, had to be careful I didn't break off a, a center drill and then what I did is I I drill and tapped two holes one on each side for quarter 28 national fine and here again I had to use my counter bores to get through the case hardening just to give the tap a, a, a fighting chance to, to get to start the threads so we put it together thusly put the quarter 28 in put the other one in I, I was going to countersink these you know make it look nice but I didn't have enough material uh, to countersink them and they're not going to be in the way of anything. There just wasn't enough meat left in here, basically this web here to countersink them. So that's the tool. Let's go over to the lathe, install it, set it up, and make a cut. See you at the lathe. Okay, folks, we're back at the uh, Atlas 10 inch lathe. The very first thing we need to do to set this guy up is we've got to square the tool post with the, the face of the chuck. The way I do it is with a, an old parallel that I keep for just for this purpose. Run it up. Got to work around the camera here. And make sure that this lays flat and this lays flat and they're parallel. Cinch it down good and tight. Now the tool post is square with the face of the lathe square and parallel. Put that back. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a center I turned a, a one inch diameter, I think that's one inch, uh, piece of rod put a point on it we're going to chuck it up in the, 
and if you notice maybe not but I have two punch marks here and that corresponds with my number two jaw and one here and three here so when I put this in I turned it when I turned it initially I put those punch marks on it and so now when I return it to here it's always referenced to the point uh, of where it was when it was made and it's a pretty true running chuck actually okay the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install the tool po or the uh, tool on the tool post and we're gonna run it up the one issue I might have with this is the fact that you've got to run the the the, the uh, cross slide quite a quite a way in because you are working off the face of the the tool post and then what we're going to do is we're going to install another dead center in the uh, chuck and then what we're going to do is we're going to run it up I usually put on a magnifier but I can see that those two points are absolutely perfect. Another alternative way I was messing around with is to take a an aluminum plate, put it in there, and see how it sits. It sits pretty good. It's 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 perpendicular to the ways this way, this way. So that's within reason a reasonable setting. The drill, the, the center drill, and the drill will find its own way anyway. So, okay. So now we've got everything tightened up. It's on center. It's parallel. If you really want to get crazy with it, you could probably extend this out and uh, put a dial indicator between your bed and here, and run it back and forth if you really wanted some some accuracy. So let's take this out. put in our piece of stock again this is just a, a piece of scrap tighten up the chuck get a center drill not being prepared very good okay here's our center drill chuck that baby up little lube to keep everybody happy and we'll start the lathe and we'll make our center drill and I'm using the uh, the carriage control to do this of course okay for our center drill Here's the here's the bit that I have. It's five sixteenths. There it is, five sixteenths of an inch, and it was plenty long enough to, for the job. Happen to have this on hand, so we insert that in. Bring it up to the face. Put a little lube on it. Start it up. Now I have a I have a a, uh, a manual a separate s s cross feed or uh, lead screw driver on this. So all I need to do is engage the lead screw, and you can see that the bit is advancing into the work, and I can control very very finely the work. So there we are. We're, we're advancing into the work. Speed it up a little bit. I could probably even advance it a little faster than that. Okay. Remove some of the chips. Put a little fresh oil on it. 
back into the slot. Re-engage. Clear the chips, a little more oil. Run it in until it's, no, it's through. <laughs> okay. Stop the lead screw. Remove the bit. Let get out of the chuck. And there it is. One hole, 5 sixteenths of an inch through about mm, three inches. Like I say, this is a scrap piece. So, worked out well. I just repeated that 99 more times and I had the parts done in, in less than two hours. The customer was ecstatic. Uh, I had a, He picked them up the same day he dropped them off. So he's happy, I'm happy. Well, that's it all. I, that's all I have for right now. I hope you found something in this video useful. If you have any questions, drop me a comment below. Give me a thumbs up or a like. Share if you think there's another machinist out there that could use this. And as always, thank you for watching and have a good day.